This is Literary Whispers. I wanted to read uh, the Anglo-Saxon poem, uh, The Wanderer, um, because I recently took a uh, modern scholars course, modern scholars, a series of uh, like freshman English courses on CD. Uh, I recently took a modern scholars course with Professor Michael Drought. Obviously, we should have recording, so I don't know Professor Michael Drought. Oh, all his courses that I've tried on CD are awesome. Anglo-Saxon literature, and it may be uh, really uh, nostalgic for Anglo-Saxon literature. Unfortunately, I just opened up my book and realized that the stupid Norton Anthology, which is usually a very good anthology, put The Wanderer in prose, which is, let's just face it, it's downright idiotic. It's a poem. So instead, I think I'm going to read uh, the uh, prologue to Beowulf, which, uh, why not? Beowulf is awesome. There's a lot of um, history of the, uh, the Danish people, um, but you can still, even in the translations, this translation is by Seamus Haney, who's an awesome uh, Irish poet, I believe. He's Irish, right? Maybe English. I can't remember. Anyway, an awesome poet. Uh, and uh, even in translation, you can hear a bit of the... Uh, Roughness of Anglo-Saxon, almost uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, was, and certain extent is considered a uh, stronger language than um, Middle English or Modern English because it it has uh, all sorts of great earthy tones. It sounds like German, basically. Obviously, this translation I can't pronounce Anglo-Saxon. Um, I, I, I haven't yet studied like. Must be prudent like that, giving freely 
where the great Halfdane held sway for as long as he lived. Their elder and warlord, he was four times a father of the spider prince. One by one they entered the world. Herogar, Hrothgar, the good Helga, and a daughter, I have heard, who was Anella's queen, a palman begged the battle-scarred Swede. The fortunes of war favored Hrothgar. Friend and kinsman flocked to his ranks. Young followers of force that grew to be a mighty army. So his mind turned to a hall building. He had handed down orders for men to work on a great mead hall, meant to be a wonder of the world forever. It would be his throne room, and there he would dispense his God-given goods to young and old. But not the common land or people's lives. Far and wide throughout the world, I have heard orders for the work to adore that wallstead were sent to many people, and soon it stood there, finished and ready, in full view, the Hall of Halls. Heriot was the name. He had settled on it, whose utterance was law. Nor did he renege, but doled out rings and torques at the table. The hall towered, its gables wide and high, and awaiting a barbarous burning. That tomb abided, but in time it would come. The killer instinct, unleashed among laws, the bloodlust rampant. Ah, uh, there's so much I can go into there. Basically, it's a the Rothgar, the king of Beowulf. It's his lineage, and uh, that was a good king, which they say about Shield Chiefson. That's almost the theme of Beowulf: is that Beowulf is the perfect king. So don't listen to that stupid movie in 3D with the uh, Angelina Jolie. The point is not that Beowulf was a normal man. Beowulf was what a king should be. That's the problem with Americans. We don't tell stories about what people should be. We tell stories about flawed characters. Because we don't want to feel inferior. And we want to be able to relate to them. But a lot of the world and a lot of history, people told stories about the ideal. Quite frankly, I think those are generally much better stories. Although, you know, I do like dark and gritty reboots as much as the next sci-fi nerd. Anyway, um, and then Hrothgar built a big hall. Hrothgar means angry spear. Hrothgar means the hall of the heart. Or, you know, the hall of the deer. Uh, loosely. Um, the, the, the antler deer was where the icons of royalty, because like, the antlers are like a crown. Um, anyway, at the end, it says that something bad's gonna happen. And in the next part, you find out what that is. And it's Grendel.